Welcome back subscribers. So today we're going to do something that's a meal prep day. It is Sunday. It's my time for meal prep because again, trying to lose the pandemic pounds. So I am making a lower calorie minestrone soup. So the key ingredients to this are a whole wheat or whole grain pasta that you only use a little bit of because again, we're doing low calorie off of this. Lots of spinach, tomato, carrots, cannelloni beans, and this is a vegan vegetarian dish. So we are using vegetable stock and vegetable juice for this as well. We're gonna take, so we're gonna take one medium white onion that I have chopped up loosely. You can hear that sizzle. That's where you know your oil is right and that's the sound you want. Sizzle is good sound for food. And two cups of shredded carrots, so peeled and shredded carrots. Now, you can go to the trouble of buying your carrots, washing them, peeling them, shredding them. You could do all of that. Or you could do what I did, which was to buy a bag of shredded carrot at the grocery store. Because even though it's a Sunday, I didn't want to spend all day on this. So as it is, my prep time took about 20 to 25 minutes to get this together. So you're gonna cook this in your pan. As you know, see there's not a lot of oil, but there's a lot of liquid in the carrot, there's a lot of liquid in the onion. So you're gonna cook this for about five minutes. So we're gonna let that go for five minutes. Now, minestrone soup is not naturally vegan or vegetarian even when you go to the restaurant. You'll have to ask because when I first started, one of my first jobs, I was a busboy at the local Holiday Inn in my hometown. And one of the things that I had to do was I had to set the salad bar every day and the soup and everything because soup and salad for lunch. Well, one day uh, we had somebody come in and they asked about the minestrone soup. They asked if it was vegetarian. Now, my first thought was, well, of course it is. There's no meat in, in minestrone soup. It's all vegetables. Of course it's vegetarian. But they asked me to go back and check with the chef. So I did. And the chef said, no, it wasn't vegetarian because he used chicken stock in the broth. Now, not being vegetarian myself, I didn't realize it when I had the minestrone soup. I just knew it was good. So if you're out to dine, you want to ask, what is the base stock and broth that is used in your soup? That's important. Same thing came up once when I was doing a potluck at work. And for some reason, the vegetarian people never bring their own food. I don't understand why, but they expect you to provide it at a potluck. So I made it vegan vegetarian chili. And sure enough, people asked me, what stock did I use? And I let them know I used pure vegetable stock, so they were happy. It was truly vegan, vegetarian, they were really happy with that. So this is getting beautifully fragrant. Love it. So last week I tried a stuffed potato recipe, which I will post later. It was a recipe fail. <laughs> they, they can't all be winners. But this was definitely a recipe fail. Um, from how I got it off of Pinterest, I tried to follow the recipe um, from the baking of the potato, trying to make it soft to the ingredients you go inside of it and everything, just it just did not turn out well. We really took one bite, my husband and I, of it, and we didn't eat the rest of it. We had to throw the potatoes away which is rather upsetting because I don't like the way food. But I will post it because, you know, recipes don't always work out. They're a trial and experiment, and your family should understand that, that not everything you're gonna do is gonna be perfect. So this is getting nice and soft. I'm very excited by this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in our spices and our liquid for this. So, the recipe called for dried oregano and dried thyme, which dried ingredients actually work well in soups because they have a stronger flavor and they work really well with all the liquid. But I wanted to add a little fresh to this one. So I have about two teaspoons of dried thyme. I'm putting in here. And the equivalent of dried oregano. 
And then I'm adding just a few sprigs of fresh thyme and a few sprigs of fresh oregano. Give that a quick stir. Ooh, I love the smell of fresh herbs. As soon as they hit the heat, they release the oils and the fragrance. Oh, this is gonna be good. I'm happy about this. This is a good, good choice. So, the recipe called for <laughs> two cups of, um, excuse me, of vegetable juice. Now, it took me a minute to figure out what vegetable juice was, because I actually drink this every day. <laughs> so because I'm doubling this, it's four cups. Um, but I wanted to get low sodium, because it asked for low sodium, because again, this is um, a weight watching recipe, and sodium retains water, so obviously we don't want that, plus blood pressure and everything. So I got low sodium, and I got the plain, because I didn't get spicy. I drink spicy all the time, but my husband won't like that, so we're not doing it. So, again, three civil sound. Two cups. Give that a quick stir. I'm going to really incorporate all your ingredients as you go. Okay. Then I'm adding in, I did two large beefsteak tomatoes that I diced, I cored and diced up. So why did I core them? When you core out a tomato, you take out the center hard part that's actually bitter and takes longer to cook as well. So I cored them out and then I diced them up. I did them as a rustic dice. I did not do a fine dice off this because I want it to be more of a rustic soup. Then we're going to add in six cups, because I did double this, so you can have it, but six cups of vegetable stock. It said vegetable broth, but I like stock for anything besides better than broth. Because to me, stock is richer, it has more flavor, and everything. So this is, one box is four cups, and I need six. So I have my extra two cups going on over here. Just get that all a stir. You're gonna bring this to a boil, you're gonna cover it, and then you're going to let it simmer for 30 minutes. So it's really not that long of a soup. A little salt and pepper, Never hurts anything. So I'll add some in right now. I'm getting a quick stir while we're waiting on that to boil. So this is going to come to a boil. Again, we're going to let it come to a boil. We're going to reduce it to a simmer. We're going to cover it. Let it go for 30 minutes. And during that time, we're going to cook up our pasta. So what I did, as I mentioned, again, I have a whole wheat pasta here. It's a small grain. The recipe said wagon wheels, but pasta was on sale at the grocery store. And as you know, anytime something is on sale, you can hardly find it. So I went for a small macaroni because you just need a small noodle. You could do wagon wheels, you could do pasta shells, whatever works for you off of this. And I've got here about six ounces, six to eight ounces of the um, whole wheat pasta. We're gonna cook it for the directions essentially. Bring your water to a boil, make sure you've salted it already. It's the only time you can salt your pasta and you bring this just to al dente, and we'll add it later. We also have a couple other ingredients we're gonna add at the end. So we'll see you in about 30 minutes while I clean up here, and this comes to a boil, and we go to simmer. See you in a little bit. Welcome back. So it has been almost 30 minutes, and as I said before, we brought it up to a boil, we reduced it to simmer, we covered it, and we let it just sit here for about these next 30 minutes. During this time, I boiled the water, my salted water for my pasta, and we have our whole grain pasta, whole wheat, whole grain pasta, ready to go into that. And we're gonna be doing our final three ingredients for this minestrone soup. So let's take a look, shall we? Ooh. Ooh, give that a stir. Nice, very nice. All right. So we're gonna add in our last couple ingredients to this. We have our pasta that we cooked up, our whole wheat pasta. In this case, I used mini macaroni. You could use wagon wheels, you could use pasta shells, mini rigatoni, anything that works for you. Then we have two cans of Catalonia beans, also known as a bit of white beans, that rinse low sodium, because again, watching our sodium intake, 
They were rinsed really well to reduce that starch out of there and drain them. I don't know if my pot's big enough. <laughs> oh, this should be fun to see how this is gonna work. All right, <laughs> because I have six cups of spinach that I trimmed, washed, and chopped up that I'm gonna add into this. So we're gonna add this a couple of handfuls at a time and let it just kind of sink in and let it wilt a little bit. As I said, I don't know if my pot is big enough. I probably should have used a stock pot. But you know what? I just, as I think through it, I don't have a stock pot. So this is what I'm doing. So I'm just putting this in a little bit at a time and letting it wilt into the soup mix. Spinach makes it healthier, makes it a green, more green dish as well, more vegetables. You've got your tomatoes, carrots, onions, you got dried oregano, dry thyme, fresh oregano and thyme, salt and pepper, vegetable stock, vegetable juice. Ooh. You have your pasta in there, your white beans. I think this will work. <laughs> Just do it slowly like this, because otherwise I think you'll end up with quite a mess on your hands. Just working that in, slowly <laughs> working it in. <laughs> I doubled this up because I wanted to make sure I had enough for the entire week. I think I have enough for two weeks, actually. <laughs> but you know what? Soup freezes. So if you've made too much, like I probably have here, <laughs> in order to be able to consume in a week, then you probably want to put it into bowls that you can freeze, which means I'm going to go to the store shortly after this and buy me some bowls <laughs> so I can freeze it up and make room in my freezer. I'm not sure if I have much room at all in my freezer as well. All right, so let us test it because again, you gotta taste your food. You gotta make sure the seasoning is right. Everything is right for this. Mixing it up just a little bit, make sure I get pasta and the beans, tomatoes, carrots. Ooh, that is what we call a hearty soup without the heaviness. So that's good. And let's just check it out. You can taste the oregano. You can taste the thyme. That little bit of freshness, a little bit of strong herb as well, of the new herbs and the dried herbs together. Uh, the spinach is a good touch off of this. So it's not your traditional minestrone soup that you might think of, but it actually is a good healthy recipe. We're gonna serve this up with some crusty sourdough bread that I have and um, side salads and everything. So we make some nice soup and salad dinner. So this was Meals with Michael with a minestrone soup. If you enjoyed this, subscribe. If you didn't enjoy it, subscribe anyway. You might find one you like. We'll see you next time on Meals with Michael. <laughs>